Hello everyone, welcome to Consortium. I was going to pronounce it Consortium, but I heard one of the developers and one of the characters inside of the game pronounce it Consortium. So I'm going to go with that pronunciation. It's a first person science fiction role playing game that takes place on a massive futuristic aircraft. I backed it on Kickstarter a while ago since it looked really interesting. It's a it's a mixture of a bunch of different things. Role playing, it's got some science fiction, it's got I'd even say some adventure game and it's got some first person shooter in there too. Which should be really interesting to explore. And from what the developers have said, it's a game that really allows you to make your own path through it with your own unique outcomes. You can go with diplomacy to get yourself through situations, you can go with violence or something in between. And I've played it for about 5 to 10 minutes just to make sure it works, and already, I really, really like it. I suspect I'm going to be in for something really special here. So I'm really excited to just dig my claws into it and go deeper. So this game is available on Steam. I'll have a link in the description to where you can check it out for yourself. And as always, with my playstyle, I like to go slow. Take my time, I read... I read usually almost everything in the environment, you know, notes and stuff like that. I like to analyze the game as I play it, especially towards the end. And since I am going to have the choice of how I want to play my character, since it is a role-playing game, I'm most likely going to be going with... Diplomacy. Maybe some... Non-violent approaches. That... Like, I think you can stun enemies. So that's a possibility too. As a fallback in case diplomacy doesn't work, but that's probably going to be my playstyle. We'll have to see what happens, but... Yep, that's probably what I'm going to be doing, and yeah, that's all there is to mention. Let's go. Access Quantum Stream. Begin New Universe. What is your consortium experience level? Alright, well, this is my first time, of course. Highly recommend it for first-time consortium players. So, let's go with that. User Agreement. You are about to activate a temporal rift through space and time, which will allow unprecedented access to an alternate version of Earth in the year 2042. You will be given speech and motor control over another human being within this other world, and will be responsible for altering and improving upon their world's regular course of events through informed action. This decision is not to be taken lightly. Everyone you are about to meet is real, and everything you do will affect countless lives with limitless consequences. By pressing Agree below, you are accepting these responsibilities henceforth placed upon you. I will agree with that. Quantum Stream Alignment in Progress. Loading Avatars. Alright, I'm apparently connected, or connecting. Get up, get up, there we go. Detected in K1 coupling data stream. Hmm. That can't be good. What are these symbols? What do they mean? This morning at the port of Felix Town, 21 workers were found dead in a cargo container ship. The ship had initiated auto docking. Okay, I, I guess I connected. That was a bumpy ride. Finding no survivors aboard. Uh, 21 one, one, one. dead. Come in. 
Nothing further. The cause of death and origin of the vessel Lights. had been released by authorities. Much better. And Not so sorry to wake you, Bishop. We thought you Thomas. should know about our little escort. Escort? Should we be worried? <laughs> worried? No, Bishop. There's nothing to worry about. Not unless you're afraid of a couple crummy American F-35s piloted by a group of washed-up mercenaries. A few more bad apples who wish the war never ended. It's just another day in the consortium. Hmm. Why are they here then? To escort us through Bulgaria. It's a long story, but let's just say the leader of this particular crew has a very strong disliking for our way of doing things. He likes to think he's doing the people of Bulgaria a service by pestering us, but really, they're as fed up with him as the K and I are. Who or what is the K? Oh, right. That's just what I call Night 15. We've been dealing with these guys for years now, and I like to think Kirill, their leader, has a crush on her. Hmm. Do you think 915 feels the same way about Kirill? <laughs> oh my gods. That felt good. Oh, thank you, Bishop. When you meet Kirill, you'll no doubt have a good laugh over what you just asked me. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, who is Knight 15 exactly? Is she the boss? Uh, you met her when you came on board, remember? She's technically our operations manager, the leader of our little team. Oh, right, of course. I'm just gonna say nothing. So, let's get you suited up and ready to kick some homeless arse. Here are your basic consortium tools. You got your PCU, BUS and assault helmet, all specifically tailored to fit you nice and snug. Did you just say kick some homeless ass? <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. The group we're up against here are unofficially called the Homeless Mercenaries. They don't sound too tough. That's because they're not tough. Not even remotely. Oh, you'll see. The K will stomp this one flat, and you'll witness firsthand how it's done. I'm gonna say nothing. You know what? You're acting a little lopsided. Maybe you should go and see Rook 13 in the med bay. I'll tell him you may be coming. It's your choice whether or not to go, of course, but I think it's better to be safe, right? We don't want a banged up bishop on our hands. Now. Pawn 7 and I have some CCU maintenance to take care of in the lower crawl. Feel free to wander the ship and meet your new crew, or maybe hit up the virtual trainer and complete your bishop training scenario. The VT is at the end of the hall, next to the elevator. Oh, and don't forget to go and get your CMC from the K. You can find her in mission operations, at the end of the hall, to your right. Okay, obtain my CMC or do the training. Right, so when I played this for 5-10 to ten minutes, my first reaction, and probably your most natural reaction, when uh, talking with her, with, what was her number? Um, Brook 25, Alana Boyle. When talking with her, my first reaction was to ask her, you know, like, who are you, where am I, what am I, what's going on? However, by doing that, you make her very suspicious and not too happy with you. Her alignment with you goes down, and the reason for that is because she doesn't know that I've beamed in and stolen somebody's body. She thinks I'm the person that she met before, because I have the same body. But now that I've beamed in and taken control of this body, I'm actually somebody else. But I don't have his memories, apparently. I don't remember what he- oops, I didn't mean to punch. <laughs> I don't remember what he remembers. So if I start asking weird questions like, who are you, even though I already met her, She's going to get very weirded out. So I need to pretend like I know what's going on even though I don't. Or at least I'm going to. Because otherwise, I don't know. What would happen if they think I'm, I don't know, a fake? Would they ever think that? Would they ever realize that I'm not actually me? I'm somebody else? 
Maybe. But it's a really interesting start to the story, isn't it? I'm starting off as someone who everybody else sees a certain way, but I'm actually something completely different. They think I'm this person, but I'm somebody else. How strange. And how am I going to deal with that? I don't know. What is this? Spare uniform. Recycle. Uh, okay, cool. I've got 6% stuff. Utility energy, apparently. Alright. Let's take a look around here. Good afternoon, sleepyhead. Good afternoon. Yes, Bishop? What can I do for you? Just saying hi. And hello again to you. Oh, and Merry Christmas. Oh, Christmas. Of course it's Christmas. Yeah, I, I knew that. And a Merry Christmas to you. Well now, aren't you the tall, dark, and friendly one? Friendly, but not handsome. <laughs> you said it, not me. Alright, I'm gonna anyway, go now. if you don't mind, I have to go check in with Rook 9 now. Hey, and try to avoid Pawn 1 if you want to keep from screaming at someone on your first day. Understood. This looks like the kitchen. It's rather, well, compact. <laughs> I can just recycle all of this. Well, ginseng cider, mineral water, and wheatgrass cider. Is anybody else looking? Anybody here? Nobody's looking. We're all gonna wonder where it went and they'll never find out. Or... Or I could just recharge. I could have done that too. But destroying sustenance was so much more fun. Food tube. Neat. It's a little... Little, uh... The hell do you call that? A place where you crawl through? Maintenance shaft sort of thing? I can even recycle the plate. I'm good, I think I'm full. Yeah, I've got 100%. I can even recycle the bowls. And the nuke. I don't even know what nuke is. <laughs> Zepsy. <laughs> Zepsy. Gee, I wonder what that is. Alright, let's go find... Uh, let's see, what can I do? I think the training thing is here. Yeah. Or I can get my CMC in the mission operations. Let's go do that. Before I train. I'm going to need to understand these symbols pretty soon. Alright, food. Cockpit. I have no idea what that one means. Anybody home? Hello? Oh. Look at all these uniforms I can recycle. No, 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 no. Must not. Must not act suspicious. Is it a map? Right, so I think this vessel is called the Zenlil. Or Zenlil. Brig Barracks, Hangar Bay. Where am I? Virtual train. Okay. Yeah, so I just came from here. Now I'm here. This is missions operations right ahead. And the cockpit even further up. Okay, so let's go to mission operations. Which is right through here. Hey, everybody. Six, welcome to mission operations. First things first, here is your consortium mind communicator. Please, just call it a CMC. Hearing consortium mind communicator over and over just gives me a headache. Consortium officers only need to think what we'd like to say to each other, and the CMC will do the rest. Perfect. Uh, shouldn't we be dealing with those fighters outside? Let him sweat it out. Maybe he'll lose interest and go away. Angelov has done this plenty of times before. Once we clear Bulgarian airspace, 
He'll scamper after whatever cave he crawled out of. It sounds like you're not a fan? He can be amusing at times. Mostly, though, he's a pig. Can I speak with him? <laughs> not this time, Six. No offense, but I don't exactly know you very well just yet. And the last thing I need is another couple of deaths on my conscience. Another couple of deaths? Only a month ago, we came across Carol and his men, exactly as now. Angelov and Bishop H, your predecessor, got into a fairly violent spitting match. Against my orders, H took control of manual weapons and shot down two of Angelov's men. A week later, he retired. And this is the first time we've seen Angelov since. I see. It sounds like Bishop 8 was a real handful. That man is crazier than a shithouse rat. <laughs> he was definitely a little rough around the edges, but he always got the job done. Don't you think Kirill's looking for revenge? Revenge? It would take another 200 of those F-35s to even scratch us. They're a level 2 threat, which means the King is well aware of what Angelov is capable of. Okay, Six, before you move on to something else, I wanted you to officially meet Rook-9, Captain of Zenlil. Good I be. Glad to have you here with us. And the name is actually Wade. Uh, just stick to Wade. Lay off the Rook-9 nonsense, eh? Thanks, Wade. It's great to be here. Once the boss deals with our friend Angelov here, come and see me in the cockpit. I got some extra rare scotch I've been itching to share with someone. Were they gone? Uh, I really miss having someone to drink with. Wade, Wade! Just stop right there, please. He's only kidding, Six. Or at least he better be. So hey, all kidding aside, give me just a few minutes to finish up this diagnostic, then I'd like to get a look at you in person. For now, I want you to walk around a little and meet your new crew. Most of them are eager to meet you. Explore Zenlil and meet your new crew and do the training. All right, let's meet everyone. Because I've already. Well, hello there, handsome. Hello there. Oh yeah, it's you again. Pawn nineteen. Let me check my standings with people. Yeah, pawn nineteen. So this is my standing. Six with her. Whoa, that's really high already. Two with her. One with him and zero with her. That's all right. I'll get her to like me. Who are you? Pawn 12. David Benedict. Uh, hey, hi. How, how are you? Oh, oh my gosh. Y you're Bishop Six. Oh, it's, it's, it's amazing to meet you. Uh, did you know that the old Bishop Six left the consortium early 2040? Yep, he just up and left. He's a stay-at-home dad now. Go figure. Uh, he lives in Florida with his wife and his two kids. Beautiful family. Beautiful, beautiful family. Love them. Okay, slow down there, buddy. It's okay. Um, I'm great. It's nice to meet you. Pawn 12, is it? Uh, yep, uh, Pawn 12, David Benedict, uh, at your service. Uh, well, well, not literally at your service, uh, unless you want me to be, because I <laughs> could be at your service, although, you know, uh, no nothing that goes over the line. But, um, uh, you, uh, you want me to get you some coffee? <laughs> uh... You, you want to get me coffee, like, right now? Sure, why not? I want to say because that's weird and you're not my secretary, but... Actually, yeah. I'll humor him. Alright, I'd love a coffee. Done! Are you... It doesn't look done. Ah, there you go. Okay. Whoa, whoa, Twelve. Wait just one second. Did the bishop here just ask you to get him coffee? Oh, well, yeah, he, he did. But I don't mind. I, I don't mind. Really, I, I don't. What the hell? I don't care if you think it's the greatest job in the world to wipe his ass. Sit down now. Seriously, Six. Try to remember sorry, that my bishop. pawns are not your personal servants. I'm not the one that asked him to. He offered. I thought it was weird, but I was humoring him. Does she hate me now? Nope, she doesn't. Alright, alright. 
Well, nobody hates me so far. I'm not in the negatives, so that's a good thing. Actually, David here seems to love me. I'm already five with him. Hmm. Alright, let's meet everyone else. Pawn one. Gary, wait. That's the person who's gonna drive me crazy if I talk to them, right? I'm gonna scream at him, she said. Gary Ma. I'm a little busy right now. Alright, I'll be super polite so far. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bother you. He's still just a little sore over Bishop 8 leaving us. Like a big baby. It's not funny, sir. You deserve better. Much better. Well, I can actually tell him you'd better learn to mind your tongue. Let's not do that. I'll ask him directly. What are you talking about? Bishop, I simply don't think you're right for this post. And why do you think that? Well, your career record alone doesn't stand up to half the other candidates. And then there's your personal life. My god, don't even get me started there. You judge this strongly based on my record and hearsay? Uh-huh. Well, I've also personally spoken to some of your previous commanders, and they all tell me that you were and <laughs> What? Okay, now my text up there is totally messed up. I can't even read that. What? What, what was that? What vessel, and wh why was your voice all... Wait a minute. That was the king's voice. Holy hell, that was such a good impression. Pretty incredible, Six. Can you do anyone else? Uh... I'm feeling tired. I have to leave now. You are dismissed, then. I'm sorry about him. Don't let it bother you. He's been rather attached to Bishop Eight since Eight saved his life the fourth or fifth time. I've got some big shoes to fill, no doubt. You could say that. He was well liked by most of the crew, but between you and I, it was his time to move on. His incredible luck was running out. Right, so something happened. And Pawn One's voice was distorted, and then I replied with a also distorted voice. And apparently they said I sounded like the king. Who's the king? Very, very, very strange. Let me save. Huh. Alright, who else is there to talk to? Oh, but Wade would be up there, right? Yeah, there he is. But it's locked. Talk to you, talk to... Wait, can I talk to you again? Oh no, let's interact with the Hollow Globe. Alright, let's see what I can do with this thing. Interaction not currently supported. Alrighty then. Global Global H2O monitoring. Global airflow chart, global pollution hotspots. Global average monthly rainfall totals. What is this? Alright, so it's all about the environment. But why do we have this information? Like, I mean, what, what do we do on the ship, the Zenlil? What is our mission? She mentioned uh, Night 15. Mentioned having deaths on her hand. On her hands. Or deaths happening around her, anyway. And this guy mentioned... No, I think it was her mentioned... Yeah, Night 15 mentioned that... Bishop... Eight... I think it was. Has saved his life many, many times. So whatever it is we do, we're obviously in a lot of danger. Hmm. Alright, let's go look for some other people. Upstairs to the food and the thing and the... No idea what that is. Let's check out this floor, though. 
All right, so back to here. It's where I just came from. This is where I am right now. Fusion crawl space. Which I can't enter, of course. Virtual trainer. And that's the hangar bay. All right, so I guess it's either training or go to a different level. Let's go up. Hello. Anybody here? I like the pervading hum you can hear. It really gives me a sense of movement. Like we're always moving. Mini botanical garden. It's pretty. Look at it. Cute little plants. Upper crawl access panel. Whoa. What's up there? Hello, right. V. I've oh. unlocked my sanctum. Uh, cockpit. Come by and say hi. Oh, sure. Right, well, it's probably kind of creepy if I just start crawling around in the crawl space up there. Especially since I'm new here, so let's not do that. Information console. See that in just a sec. Whoa, what's happening? Errors detected in K1 coupling data stream. Yeah, that seems to keep happening. I guess the connection... ...to this person is not perfect. And I like that they keep reminding me of that, with those frequent errors... ...that mess up sound and your sight. It's always... it's like the game's always reminding you that you're not... ...you. Or you're not... ...him. Uh, let's see. Current high is 4 degrees... 4 degrees centigrade, oh my god. A beautiful new you. Leading the world in nanosurgery techniques. The Nanomedical Society of Canada's primary goal is to help mankind reach its longevity potential. Engage, learn, play the new VX3000. What the hell is that? Oh, virtual reality. Hmm. Come relax at... Something space station. There's the errors again. Let's get the information console. Breaking news. Multiple murder in London. Whoa. Can I look up the information for... Oh my god. Oh, holy crap. Whoa. Oh. My. God. This might be the most text I've ever- Holy shit! This must be the most text I've ever seen on an information system within a game ever in the history of- The history of all time. Oh. My. God. Okay, normally I read all text. However, it looks like reading all of this would take literally hours. So I'm going to read some of it at some point, but I'll save that for a little bit later. That is incredible. I'm I'm really, really impressed. Chessboard. Which, by the way, is a rather strange thing, isn't it? Not the chessboard, but just the fact that we have names related to chess. Like pawn and knight and bishop. Why is that? It sort of gives the feeling that we're all part of a game. Which, you know, it's kind of figuratively true, I guess, of course. Everybody's kind of playing in a game, you know, but also, literally speaking, are we in a game? I mean, I've beamed into somebody's body. Like, is this just a bit of fun? Is this a future sport? Or a future pastime? Is taking control of somebody's body? And playing through their life? Without any harm to yourself being possible? Which, actually, now that I think about it, would be extremely creepy. I believe I read somewhere in the... 
sort of lore behind the game, I guess you could say, before starting that, every time someone beams into a new body, a new experience, what's actually being accessed is a new universe, like a new reality, an alternative reality, a different version of, of Earth. So is this like a pastime in the future? I don't know. It's damn creepy. Anyway, let's go speak to Wade. Oh my god, I'm getting like 18 FPS. Weird. Yeah. Okay, Mum. Look, we need to say goodbye now. No, no, no. Don't, don't tell me to shut my mouth. It's not nice. No, no Mum. You need to rest. Yes, rest is good. We'll, we'll talk later tonight when you're feeling better. Yeah. A uh, goodbye, Mum. Ah, sorry about that, V. Uh, welcome to the nerve center of everything, Zemlion. Uh, you see all those buttons and switches all over the place? I actually know what they do. Every one of them. <laughs> How's that for impressive? I'm impressed. There's a lot of them. Very. You mentioned some extra rare scotch before? <laughs> oh, Christ. I wish I was being serious. It's not like this plane doesn't fly itself anyway. So a drunk captain wouldn't on? make much a difference. <laughs> if you don't fly this thing, then what do you do? <laughs> Try not to fall asleep, I guess. I started a game with myself a few weeks ago. For every hour I stay awake, I give myself a cookie. Eight pounds later, and I'm still doing pretty good. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> uh, lighten up, V. Bullshit's a lot more fun than the truth. The uh, boring answer is that I'm kept quite busy. I mostly just feel like a big daddy to all the scampered pods around here. During your missions, I'll be the one guiding your hand, telling you where to go and what to avoid. I can pretty much tap into any security system out there, giving me a bird's eye view on all your surroundings. On my missions, I wonder what my missions are going to be. <laughs> so if I walk into an ambush and die, it's on you? Let's not say that. Do I have to go where you tell me to? That's kind of a weird thing to say. I'm going to say nothing. So, that was your mother on the line? Yeah, it sure was. Second greatest love of my life. She's had Alzheimer's for a few years now. Yeah. I'll try and call her when I can. I'll visit whenever I'm back in Perth. Hmm. Wow, I can be a total dick. Well now, that's both incredibly sad and pathetic. Jesus. That's really very sweet of you. <laughs> hey now, don't you go getting any ideas. I'm sweet on my mum and this ship, but that's it. I can be a total dick again. So then your first greatest love is this plane? <laughs> You've got it. I haven't had a flesh and blood partner since first taking this captain's chair. But I say who needs them? Am I right? Besides, I've always got me mum. Exactly. <laughs> I can smile and say, does Wade need a girlfriend? Um. Well, what an odd thing to say. Oh, I'll grow on ya. I can promise you that, lad. Like a sticky kind of fungus. <laughs> Did you just call me a lad? How old do you think I am? How the hell should I know? I didn't look at your file that closely, mate. I trust the King's judgment. I must say, though, you don't look a day over 20. Out with it, then. How old are you? Um... It... I don't know. I I'm guessing there's no way I'm 33. And saying I don't know is kind of creepy. So, I'm 21 years old. God, I hope that's right. My God, that's more than half my... Eh, never mind. Youngest damn bishop I've ever heard of. <sighs> I guess that's a compliment. So, B, is there anything else you need? I've got something here I need to concentrate on. Uh, can I help you at all? I appreciate the offer, but no. Don't sweat it. The King and I have got everything under control. We'll find the bastard. And hey, welcome to the consortium. Oh, now that's odd. What's up? Something just tripped security sensors on Bishop Eight's old bus locker. The keypad was accessed. 
Why is this bus still aboard? Ah, it's a long story, but essentially the company we use for recycling most of our equipment hasn't been available to pick it up for weeks. So in Bishop Aid's old cabin, the bus sits. They claim work order issues and double bookings, but I think the whole company is going down. Hmm. Should I go take a look in the cabin? Yeah. Hey, why not? Saves me the trip. I wouldn't be surprised to find it's just another glitch. Zen has been acting mighty strange today. Although, the bus locker itself is separate from the ship's primary systems right now. It's bloody well disconnected. Hmm. Well, if you're up for it, I'd appreciate the help. The cabin's right across from yours, you can't miss it. Go take a look, and I'll keep an eye out through your CMC. Did you... just... If I say... No, I'm gonna say nothing. Okay, so apparently they can see through my CMC. And or hear through it, probably both. But if I say that, I'll be creepy because I guess I should know that. So, shh, don't say a thing. Right, so it's disconnected and yet somehow it triggered something. That's very strange. Whoa. The hell? What's going on with the power? Right, this was my place, right? Whoa. This, this power's creeping me out. Yeah. So this is the spot. It's very, very dark. Why aren't the lights turning on? Lights? Whoa! Oh, wait! Lock down that cabin immediately! Way ahead of your boss. Is that pawn seven? But I... I was just with him two minutes ago. What happened? Rook 13, will you please quietly get up there? And don't tell Pawn 24 anything. We need to contain this before the whole ship finds out. Yes, sir. On my way. And I'm sorry, Six, but I need you there. At least until Rook 13 can take a look. Uh, of course. No problem. Good. Just until Rook 13 can determine it was an accident. I'm not about to believe someone committed murder on my ship. It doesn't look like an accident. Okay, Wade. Let me in. My God. I just let him go on his lunch break. He was complaining about having skipped breakfast. I... I was only trying to be nice for once. Alana, you have nothing to blame yourself for. If there is someone to blame for this, then I trust he or she will come forward on their own. Wade, I am here. I can't believe he's dead. I've been such a bitch to him lately. You are more often than not a bitch to everyone. Not only Pawn 7. Jesus. Oh my god, the second option. Suck it up. I mean, he's only a red shirt. Oh, some brother you are. No, 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 I, I won't say that. I myself if I want to. Thank you very much. If I had only kept acting a hard ass would still be with me in the crawl right now. It looks as though someone threw his head against the locker panel with enough force to nearly cave in his skull. This was absolutely no accident. Thank you, Kieran. You are not going to like this, but I want you all to exit the room immediately. Nobody gets in or out, not until we reach Ireland. Are you kidding me? At least let us move him to the med containment unit. Here, Kieran, help me put him on the bed. Uh, I'm not going to say anything. Hmm. My book. What was that, Kieran? Your book? Mind explaining what your book was doing under the dead body of one of my pawns? I cannot explain that to you because I do not know. I noticed it was missing from the med bay this morning. I simply assumed someone had borrowed it. I was apparently correct. The Ancestor's Endless Drink is the name of it. What the hell's going on? Maybe someone is trying to fret. It is plausible. But also highly unlikely. Remember where you two are. This is not some corrupt military. Now, Alana, I hear your concern, 
but we can't risk someone seeing you move his body to the med bay. I'm sorry, but forget about the containment unit for now. All of you, listen to me very carefully. This stays between us. I swear that we'll get to the truth when we land in Ireland and we can question everyone individually. I really don't think waiting is a good idea. Someone on board this plane just killed one of my people and I want to know who. If only so I can personally string him up and throw him in the brig. Let me investigate and find the truth. Thank you, Bishop. This is not a democracy. No matter what you two may think. Now, if you don't mind, get your asses out of that room. Yes, sir. This is so bloody insane. A murder on a C-3800. It can't be real. I'm going back in the crawl. I really... I really do not like the idea of being on board when there's a murderer here and being silent about it. Right, well I need to leave. Should be locked, right? Yeah. Nobody's going in there again anytime soon. Okay, then. Well, that's an interesting first... day? The first hour. Jesus. Oh, look, it's a little bishop. Cute. Alright. Career record. Combat accuracy, 100%. I've never even fired a gun. All right, primary objective, complete the training. And meet the crew, secondary objective, speak with Rook 13 in the medical bay. Let's continue to explore. I was starting upstairs when I ended up going to Wade. Hold on, can I go speak with... I'm gonna have trouble remembering everybody's names. What's your name? Night 15. Oh, well, apparently everybody kind of likes me. Except for Gary. Pawn 1. Alright, upstairs again. The latest news weather and offers. Can I actually use this? No. Interaction not currently supported. Alright, what is upstairs? That is the holographic situation room. It's where you can watch Dirty Holovitz when you're bored and feeling uh, lonely. Whoa, whoa, I am <laughs> listening to this, you know. Oh, hey, boss. Uh, I was just telling the bishop about the uh, Dirty Holovitz. <laughs> <laughs> All jokes aside... The hollow situation room is actually for mission briefings and debriefings, usually led by the king or the queen. I was getting to that part, I swear I was. Okay, I kind of really like Wade. He seems like a fun guy. I like him. Exterior door. Let's try to open that. Aw, it didn't work. Wait, this is a disposal unit, now I can recycle it? I can recycle a disposal unit? Well, that's irony. Does the sink work? It does. And it looks really, really strange. It's like... looks like sludge. Alright, what is going on with the lights aboard the ship? Like, something seems wrong with the power. I'm going to the bathroom. Okay, this is super, super cool. I know this seems like a small thing, but I love just being able to interact with stuff in an environment. 
in a believable way. And this is just so cool. I, I love the fact that this game takes place in one hyper, like, hyper-detailed location. It makes it feel like a real living space. I mean, how many games take place in basically one location that allow you to get really intimate and familiar with it? You know, most times you're moving through through new levels. And any level that you maybe keep returning to, or area that you keep returning to, you, you probably don't visit that much. But the fact that this takes place in one location allows you to get very familiar with it. Look at how much interactivity there is. Use the sink, use the heating element. Flush the toilet. They're small things, but they're very, very cool. You can even lock the door to go to the bathroom. That is really cool. Well, looks like the engine compartment. Alright, let's go check it out. Speak of the engineer or engineer. Whoa. I, know where he is. I just walked through the door. Don't you think it's at least a little peculiar? She's angry about something. I learned a long time ago not to let Rook 25's mood swings bother me. Yes, yes, fine. But I'm telling you, something is going on with Pawn 7. Just get back to work. You may be okay with turning a blind eye around here, but I'm not. Whatever you say. There's just no arguing with you, is there? Piss off, Patricia. Jesus. Some of the people on this ship are just... angry. Now, who are they just talking about? Rook, was it Rook 25? Oh, that's Alana Boyle. I can't remember who the other person they were talking about, though. <laughs> Hello, Pond32, Patricia Thorn... Thornwaite? Or Thorn... Th Thornthwaite? Not quite sure how to pronounce that. Good afternoon, Bishop. I'm sorry you had to hear all that. Oh, I don't mind hearing a bit of gossip. I can use it to manipulate people. I mean, um... What is Pawn Force problem, exactly? <laughs> Rook 25's just been acting a little... Well, a little more strict lately. And Pawn 4 here just thinks he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Doesn't understand why she can't be nice to him. She's been acting like a real bitch. Apparently, she has been like this since Bishop 8 left. Hmm. <laughs> Do you have to swear? Am I really going to chastise someone for swearing? Um. Well, I'm not here to judge anyone. Not my problem. Good. That's a relief then. Some other bishops have reputations for sticking their noses into pawn business. They just don't seem to understand. We report to the rooks, the rooks and bishops both report to the knight, and the knight to the queen and king. So I have no command over you at all? Let's not say that, that's kind of creepy. I'll say nothing. <clears throat> I'm sorry, bishop, but I've got some work in upper avionics to take care of. Wade mentioned something about environmental monitors acting funny, and he wants me to check it out. Of course, of course. Engine diagnostics and maintenance. Oh, I can pretend to type too. You want to see me? Interaction not currently supported. Ah! Oh, hey. I know you probably want to get to know me, and all that crap, but Rook 25 has just stuck me with many of Pawn 7's duties. <sighs> I am a little busy. You know, I really wouldn't be too surprised if, what was her name? Rook 25? Treat you poorly? Because you seem like a dick bag. You seem like a big bag of dicks. Like, dozens of dicks in a bag. No problem. I'll leave you to it then. Yippee! You are too kind. 
Bishop. You go have a lovely day. You fucking prick. <clears throat> Who left spare parts on the ground? I don't want to tell you how to do your job, but that's a little, not really an appropriate place for spare parts. Someone could trip. Whoa. What the hell? What was that? Whoa. It's like a... I don't know, a laser ladder or something? Neat. What's up here? There's an elevator. What's over here? There's a tube and it's very, very white. Whoa. Yeah, I really like the art style of this game. Spare parts, that is also not an appropriate place for spare parts. No, I really do like the art style in this game, though. It's very... You know, when I first saw screenshots, I almost thought it was cartoony. And it is slightly. But only very slightly. It's just got a very smooth look to it. You know, lots of solid colors rather than... Rather than textures so much. And it actually... It works really well. Oh. Would it be creepy if I just came out of the vent above you? <clears throat> I don't mean to scare you. Welcome aboard. How come everything's all still distorted? My signal looks fine. But it doesn't sound fine. Wait, is that the only en the only entrances to this place? Are just little crawlways? Uh, all right, I'm gonna leave now. Yeah, I mean my connection seems fine. There's no text at the top that says like my my connection's having problems. The bars, the connection quality bars look fine. Go back out of here and see if it goes away. Hmm. No. I feel like the game may be bugged out. Let's, um... Let's quick load. Okay, that seems to have fixed it. Oh yeah, that... is this thing. But I almost went up. Okay, now we're back here. So, where was I? This was the engineering, right? Yep. Let's continue on back here. Mission pod. Still don't know what the missions we do are, but I guess I'll find out soon. Mission pod and atmos... Atmo shielding maintenance. I'm sure I can't interact. Nope. Probably have to do the training first or something like that. I can punch, though. So that's what my interaction is limited to. Punching and talking. My two favorite things in the world. <laughs> I'm inefficiently going through this room instead of just going around because I can. What's back here? My sister's going as well. She's never been to the theater before. 
being a hologram in the seats it doesn't really count as going to the theater, does it? <laughs> At least it gives her some culture for a change. Something better than the hours she spends in that VR world she calls a life. Hey now, that VR world makes her happy, no? I don't know. I just don't see the appeal of living your life like that. It's not really living. Uh, tell her that to, to the millions of wireheads out there. Wireheads? There's even a term for them. I'm starting, I really am starting to suspect that this is some sort of a, I guess, what I'm doing here, like what I'm, who I am. The fact that I'm controlling somebody else, apparently without their consent. I'm really starting to suspect that it's some sort of a sick pastime. Like, just a game. That's justified as being harmless. Because you're accessing a different, a different universe, a different shard. But of course, these people are actually real. They just don't exist in your universe, your reality. I don't know. It's creepy. I'm sure I'll find out more. Can't use. Let's go have hey, a chat with these. Bon pomeriggio, Bishop. Welcome to Global Ops. Hello. Hmm. <laughs> what were you two talking about when I came in? I'm not going to let on that I was eavesdropping. And what do you guys do up here in Global Ops? As the title suggests, we monitor global operations. No way! Everything that happens inside our grid comes through this room. It's our job to sort through it all and ensure that treaties and alliances are held up. The king does most of the work, but we like to think we help. I'd really like to meet this king. I can ask what it means to be inside our grid. Is it a suspicious question to ask, though? It might be. Let's be safe. So you're a big brother, in other words? Big brother? What do you mean? 1984. The novel. No. <laughs> hey, you're making me feel so old sometimes. And the bishop? Yes, uh, I guess we are a little like a bigger brother. But in a good way. We are always out there, and we're always watching. Sounds comforting. Hmm, I'm gonna ask the grid question. We'll see what happens. Each of the five consortium C-3800 vessels have their own list of supporting entities to monitor, and in most cases, police. So all that landmass or orbital territory is what we call our grid. Oh. <laughs> this thing can go to space? Uh, I'm probably supposed to know that, so let's not ask that. Oh, here we go. Damn, this is pretty... <laughs> I want to say serious, but I'm going to go with Hod. What's going on? The thing on London docks uh, in, in Felix Dole, the uh, ship that showed up with a bunch of corpses. The London police weren't releasing many details to the public, but now they're spilling everything to us in a TS packet. Mm -hmm. It's a lot to go through. What is a TS packet? I'm probably supposed to know that too, so I'll just say at least give me a hint why they involve us. One second. Yes, it's because... What the hell? The 21 people were shot to death with AK-47 rifles? If that's not enough, the bullet casings found all date back to... You're not gonna believe this. 2013. This doesn't make any sense. That's long obsolete weaponry firing bullets from before the war. I'm sorry, Bishop, but the King has made this a priority. We need to concentrate. I understand. I should go read the news about that murder. What is going on? Satellite image of Felix Felix Stowe? Docks? Shell casings recovered at crime scene. AK-47. Unreleased official statement. I believe I can actually read that. Yeah, it's not too blurry. A ship auto docked at Felix Stowe. No communication of any kind from the ship. Communication with the dock workers was then lost about a half hour later. So emergency personnel were sent in and police followed some time later. By the time they arrived, however, all of the dock workers and security had been shot to death and the location was deserted. Weird. In fact, let's read the news right now. Wait, was it here? Where was the news of the murder? 
I can actually search for specific things. Oh. Feel Felix Stowe? Was that how you Does this search work at all? What is this? Does this do anything? Do I have to like press a Oh, I need to actually press the button. I can't press enter. Riot. Riot at Voltaire Prison coincides with Bishop 2 Memorial. Is this related to the thing that just happened? I don't believe so. Oh, can't press enter. There we go, here we go. Multiple murders in London. December 21st, 2042. Multiple murders at Port of Felixstowe, London. Malcolm Thomas reporting live. Hello everyone, my name is Malcolm Thomas and I'm reporting to you live for the Global Newswire, just outside of London, England. Well folks, it's almost Christmas and all the children are eagerly, eagerly, eagerly awaiting old Santa's arrival. Expert pronunciation there from my part, huh? Eagerly. It's not that hard of a word. Eagerly. There we go. Throughout most of the UK today and right through on to Christmas, we're looking at non-stop wind and rain, followed by up to 20 centimeters of snow. Here at home, we're facing one hell of a storm front, so bundle up and prepare for a thunder snowstorm, because it's coming. Another more upsetting news. Early this morning at the port of Felixstowe, 21 workers were found dead in a cargo container ship. The ship had initiated auto-docking procedures, and emergency personnel on site reported as finding no survivors aboard. 21 dead. Nothing further, including cause of death and origin of the vessel, has been released by authorities. And that's the latest from here in London. I'm Malcolm Thomas. Okay. Cause of death has not been released by the authorities, so they're not telling people what caused, the, what caused their deaths, even though we know that they know. Is an AK-47. So they don't want the public to know that. Why? Hmm. Wait a minute. What about uh, the term? What was it wirehead? Yeah. Let's let's figure out exactly what the wireheads are all about. Again, I'm not going to read like one hour of this stuff at one time, but I do want to look at the like the things that just come up that I can learn more about. Alright, oh my god. I'm not sure I'll read the whole thing. It might be too much. But let's take a look. January 1st, 2042. Wireheads. From Fringe to Forefront. By Conspawn13. From The Virtual Revolution. When asked by Dr. Kasarian to write an article for his upcoming book, The Virtual Revolution, I admit to being floored. It isn't often that a VR personality especially one only renowned for gaming and finance, gets asked to contribute to an academic publication. A personality who is anonymous, no less. There was no way I could turn down the offer. So here we are. Dr. Kasarian gave me essentially unlimited choice when it came to my article, and I could think of no one better than discussing the... I could think of one no better than discussing the culture that has arisen out of the virtual reality. We are called Wireheads. The term wirehead was originally meant to be a derogatory insult aimed at those who had chosen to have nodes surgically attached, allowing access to the VR from anywhere with a wireless signal, meaning everywhere they are broadband out by the asteroids. Think back on some of the other derogatory terms that have arisen to label outcast social groups. Greaser, hippie, goth, hipster, cyber goth, otaku, all of these, which once had pretty damn strong derogatory meanings, have been embraced by their respective subcultures and now have no negative meaning. Neat, huh? Well, I wish the same could be said of many racial slurs. We're getting there. Wireheads. We emerged as a subculture shortly after Worldview acquired Macro Scene, and the technology to remotely jack into the VR became widely available. It was met with... Why is there a question mark there? It's strange. It was met with hesitation, <laughs> to say the least. Some re may remember in and around 2013, Google tried to market a piece of tech called Google Glass. Ooh, wow, this is getting recent. Hello, modern times. That was basically a smartphone you wore on your face. 
It allowed you to take pictures, record videos, look up stuff, that sort of thing. It was a colossal failure, and, <laughs> and considered one of the company's worst investments. The reason why? Privacy. In that era, in the time before freedom of information and government disclosure, people were terrified of some random individual able to snap their picture. Businesses banned them in mass. They were illegal in casinos and any public workspace. In the end, they simply and silently slid off the shelves as Google took them back and ate the loss. Flash forward 20 years. The same privacy concerns just don't matter to the modern person. And seeing someone walking around jacked into a VR doesn't raise alarms in the same way it would have before the wars. Even without the privacy concerns, there was still a real backlash against the first few wireheads. At first it was for our safety. We were being dragged too far into this fake reality and abandoning our lives. Adults worried, kids cried, interventions were had, tech was confiscated. Anecdote time. The very first surgically implemented VR node was created by Ming Lao, a student of Peking University, whose parents had confiscated all of his VR gear for fear of him losing touch with his schooling. He decided to invent a way so they couldn't control when and where he logged in, and then he made billions of dollars. It didn't take long before it became about regulations. Was the implant safe? Was it approved by World Health Organizations? What were the long-term health and psychological implications of having this tech screwed into your brain? The first nodes were also pretty obvious. Unlike the current ones which hide behind your ear and in a few years will only resemble a freckle. Piercings, tattoos, and any multitude of body mods had all become pretty commonplace. But have a small piece of tech sticking out the side of your head and suddenly everyone just freaks out. There was a lot of scorn and name calling in the early days. In fact, the term wireheads came out of a VR news article condemning the new practice, saying it was going to cross all the wires in your head. Hence, the subculture of wireheads was born. It took about five years for widespread acceptance of the implant technology. The safety concerns fell away, and wireheads went from being a derogatory term to one that was now commonplace for anyone who even used the VR even those without the implants. Soon after, with the miniaturization of the node technology, the number of us with these implants began to grow exponentially. Some companies make them a necessity. Admittedly, the ones that do tend to be information tech companies and anyone applying there usually already has the implant. The introduction of node technology has allowed even the average person to have unlimited access anywhere in the world and beyond to the VR and by definition, the collected knowledge of mankind. There's still a bit of resistance out there. As with any subculture that becomes mainstream, there will be a backlash. Sometimes in the form of satire, such as virtual reality reggae, a popular meme, and sometimes in a more dangerous and violent form. In many still developing nations, being identified as a wirehead can make you a target to more extreme groups, who quite simply don't want to be identified. It's the Google Glass problem all over again. If you can pull up the information on who that baddie is down the street, he's going to take issue with it, and potentially try to yank the node from your skull. And this is not a frequent occurrence. In fact, violent acts against wireheads have been specifically targeted for their use of the tech. Uh, who have been specifically targeted for their use of the tech is far fewer than 100 recorded a year. Here we are, on the dawning day of 2042. Wireheads are everywhere. Rough estimates put around 500 million people out there who wear the no technology. And every day, the wealth of data and knowledge available in the VR is increasing. When will you join us? Okay, I'm amazingly impressed with the amount of detail that has been put into this game. Look at this. I mean, look at what just happened. Somebody on board the ship mentioned a term that sounded interesting and I wanted to learn more about it. So I searched for it and found an article. That was what, like a, a five... What was that, five minutes to read, maybe? A f like a five-minute article, a huge article. On the subject that I found interesting. And that is only one of... <laughs> one of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Look at this. The amount of work that has been put into this is absolutely mind-blowing. Just, oh my god.
It's incredible. You know, I'm actually not entirely sure how this works now that I'm looking at it. Zenlil. I think these are just search terms. So actually, this might not be hundreds. Yeah, because a lot of these are actually getting the same thing. Well, some of them. However, even if there's only like a couple dozen... No, there's more than that. The amount of detail in them, look at this, it's just, it's still insane. That is amazing. That's absolutely amazing. I'm really blown away. Okay, um, what am I doing? I still need to speak to everyone. And I've already been back here, just came from there. I, yeah, just explored up here. I think it's time to go down. Let's go hit up the elevator. With me and my wonderful FPS that just actually got good again. Weird. Yeah, this game has some of the most insane FPS, like, fluctuation I've ever seen. It goes from, like, 60 to 15. And just by walking a couple feet down the hallway, it's really strange. Alright, so I'm supposed to see someone in the med bay, which must be down here, since I didn't see them up there. Yep, there's a little med bay symbol. And here's the... Oh, hi. Here's the brig. Wait, come back! Adele Durand. Wait, come... come. Where are you going? Bishop. Yes, can... Oh, no, you're pushing... Get, I can't get off her. What the hell? Get away from me. Jesus. What just happened? I got stuck on her. Uh, see if I can go have a chat. No? Alrighty, then. <laughs> Wasting Time A book? In the holding cell called Wasting Time Sounds like fun Gotta flush all the toilets And dry my hands Cause I can Must be these sleeping quarters. Whoa. Current date, December 21st. That is a very interesting calendar. I guess it works. Hmm. Clothing washer. I would have thought they would have had some, like, super technology to wash clothes. Like, stick it in some sort of a laser beam and it's magically clean. Another information console. Hey, how you doing, uh, Pawn44, Charlie Lewis? Actually, you're sleeping, aren't you? Hmm, is either sleeping or he's doing some VR or maybe both at the same time? That's an interesting thought, isn't it? Going to virtual reality into some peaceful place. Maybe you're floating in the sea, or maybe you're just in like a, a field of flowers or something like that. Just somewhere you find comforting. And go to sleep. Huh. Everybody's got up their own personal pictures. A person and a cat. And another person with a hat. People. More people. I wonder who those pictures actually are of. I wonder if they're the developers. Like the developers and their families.
Privacy shield control. Oh. Uh. It needs to be opened from the inside. And there's nobody inside, but I just activated it from the outside. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. Oh, no, I did it again. Oh, so, shit. Well, hey, the new bishop. Mm, I've got a few I... minutes to talk if you want. How was your sleep? Those bunks up there can be pretty comfortable. They're 60% made of hemp. Canadian hemp, the best in the world. Dude, I love Canadian hemp. <laughs> but I can't feel the bunk because it's not my skin. Uh, I, I mean, no, that's not what I meant to say. Hey, I had a great sleep, in fact. Excellent. I always wonder when I'm put with a new bishop or rook or knight. I always wonder what they're going to be like. And you seem cool, so that's good. I'm very cool. In fact, you'll get frostbite if you touch me. Why well, you talk fast and a lot. I mean, well, thank you, Bond44. No problem, no problem. Glad to help. Uh, I actually haven't helped you, have I? Well, glad to meet you, at least. Mm, you want to see who can talk faster? You really do need to slow down a little. Yes, yes I do. And someone call me mad. Bishop 8 even once tried to kill me about two <laughs> He denies it, of course, and nobody believes me, but I know it's true. He tried to kill you? Yeah, no joke. I was talking with him about how the world has seen a decrease in the number of populations living with a sub-replacement fertility rate. Well, apparently he didn't like what I had to say and pulled his weapon on me. He threatened to kill me if I didn't stop speaking. Oh, hey, Bishop. I didn't hear you come in. I, uh, I have to get back to work. Wait, what the? Wait a second, Makai, not so fast. Are you coming to the party or not? We're having it before you leave for home, the second we're done in BC. No excuses will be accepted. No, uh, I can't. I'm sorry. It's nice to meet you. Didn't I just walk by there and he wasn't here? Where did he come from? Are there people sleeping here right now and they're just invisible? What's happening? That is really, really strange. Oh god, that's not my locker. That's creepy. I just opened someone else's locker. I'm sorry. So, Bishop, I was just playing a game with my brother, but he had to go and take care of something. Do you need anything else from me? I'd be happy to chat, at least until my brother gets back. Hmm. What game are you playing with your brother? Peacecraft. It's just come out from Snowstorm Studios, and it's as close to playing a consortium bishop as I've ever seen a game get. Not that I'd really know what it's like to be one of you. <laughs> close to playing a consortium bishop, you don't say. Peacecraft? That sounds familiar. Ha! <laughs> well, I'm not surprised. It's quite popular right now. As good as a VR game can get, and believe me, I know them all. I'm sorry, Bishop. Uh, I've got to get back to my game. My brother's back, and we don't have much time to finish this level. We'll talk later, I promise. Aw. I should have asked him about more important things, but I didn't. <laughs>